Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel for another Sideshow Collectibles 1 6 scale figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at Brandon Lee's Eric Draven from The Crow. Now I got mine direct from Sideshow. I have popped a link to their site in the description below and for full transparency it is an affiliate link. Any commission earned will be reinvested back into the channel and put towards making new content. If you are heading down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button. So you're notified as soon as a brand new Sideshow figure review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, I am so here for it. I love the colour, the composition and the fact that instead of cheaping out and using images or screenshots from the movie, all of the pictures of Eric Draven are of the actual figure. Including this one where he's walking towards the cracked window. Up top we've got the crow in bright red lettering so it pops, and down below the Sideshow and Six Scale logos. The only complaint I have with the artwork, and trust me it is a very minor one, is that some of the images in the pieces of glass are repeated. I would have liked to have seen unique figure photography in every single one of them. And then around the back, it turns out it can rain all the time, because there's a very rainy scene with Eric walking towards us, arms outstretched, yes that is the figure himself, and a crow flying above him. Unfortunately he doesn't actually come with the crow in that pose, which is something we'll address a little bit later. I actually think the banners that Sideshow used to hold the two layers of the clam tray together are a really neat idea. Not only do they add some extra security to the packaging so stuff isn't rattling around, but it's an extra piece of artwork, which is always a good thing. It does, however, make the unboxing experience a little bit more involved. You're going to have to take out both clam trays from the box, slide off the banner, then you can remove the lid which was taped down in two completely random spots. At least nothing is going anywhere during shipment. First in hand impressions for Eric. So far so good, I'm liking what I'm seeing. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first. Don't get me wrong, I am glad that we have one. It's just that this is Literally, the most basic style of display base they could have possibly gone with. It's a plain black hexagon with an adjustable crotch grabber. They continue for some unknown reason to print the movie logos on the underside of their bases. If only that The Crow logo was up on top, this base would have looked so much better for it. And because it would have been high gloss black on a matte black surface, it still would have been quite subtle. Now when you have Eric standing on the display base, try not to have his leather or leather pants pressed up against the crotch grabber, because these do tend to dig into pleather and they may cause damage over time. One of the main reasons I decided to get the Sideshow Eric Draven over the Hot Toys one is that dude just comes with more weapons. You get the pistols that you don't get with the Hot Toys one, same thing with the shotgun and the katana. Unfortunately I was a little bit late to the game though and I did miss out on the Sideshow exclusive. So yeah, I don't have the guitar. I will try and find one on the aftermarket because I do want to have him displayed with it. We do get a revolver painted in shiny metallic silver. You can extend out the middle section and it will rotate. They haven't for some weird reason painted the bullets though. I would have liked to have seen that detail. As for his M9, this is one of the simplest 1-6 scale weapons that I've ever seen. You can't remove the magazine, the slide doesn't actuate, and it's cast in gunmetal plastic with no paint applications whatsoever. The one saving grace, I guess, is that you can move the hammer back. Not sure if that adds a ton, but it's there if you want it. So on the back of the box there was an image of Eric walking towards us with a flying crow behind him with the wings outstretched. The only crow that they include though is a sitting position one, which in and of itself is fine because you can have it on the display base as some set dressing or if you get the balance right you can perhaps perch it on his shoulder. But then why have an image of a crow flying on the box? It just makes no sense to me. Whereas the Hot Toys version of Eric does come with a flying crow. 
And I am currently trying to find just the bird and its stand because I would like to have it hovering behind him in the display. It looks like the wings are separate pieces, so they absolutely could have done swap out flying pose wings like we got with Eagly from Hot Toys with Peacemaker. The sculpt work for the feather detail is fine, it's made of rubbery plastic so no worries when it comes to breakage, even for the teeny tiny sharp nails. The feet and the beak, both done in grey, whereas the rest of the body is done in matte black. The eyes being high gloss helps them pop against the matteness for the rest of the crow and being as small as they are, they cannot have been easy to paint. You can slide the front part of the shotgun back, not all the way. And the ejection port doesn't open. We have seen more detailed weapons from pretty much every other 1-6 scale company. It's not to say that it looks bad, I just think that they could have been more detailed. There's not even a wash in the crevices, a little bit of an oil wash to sink into the sculpt work I think would have made this look so much better than it does. For those hoping the katana is made of die cast because it kinda sorta looks like it is, it isn't. It's made of plastic. Could have fooled me though. The metallic paint that they've used on the blade has this flake through it, so when light bounces off the surface it's just shiny enough that it looks like it could be made of metal. For figure photography this is going to work a treat. We've got some sculpt work on the oval section below the blade, and plenty of detail for the handle. Yes, my preference is always die cast blades when they're an option. When they aren't, as long as you paint the plastic swords right, I'm satisfied. And lastly, a full array of hands, and every single one of them comes with its own wrist peg. So when it comes to breakage, you have plenty of spares. It's something that Sideshow have done for the longest time, but Hot Toys have never done. Maybe one day they can give us this many wrist pegs. Oh, and they also didn't include this hand with their Eric Draven. That, to me, seems like a massive oversight, because the expression that the Hot Toys figure has perfectly suits a pose with this hand on. It's the hand with the hole blasted through it when he was shot by Fun Boy. There's some darker red shading for the wound, and some lighter red for the blood dripping down that is done in high gloss, so it looks suitably realistic. He's got Shelley's ring on that's been painted in gold, and there's even some white at the base of his fingernails to mimic cuticles. For the rest of the hands, he does have the duct tape on, and it's a different sculpt from the right side as compared to the left. It looks like the duct tape is being cinched in between his fingers. There's some vein work sculpted in, some shading, and the cuticle paint applications are on every single one of the hands. So these two, they're gripping hands for the right and left side. We then get trigger finger hands, or pointing hands perhaps, depending on the pose, relaxed, open palm hands, and I'm just now noticing that there's some subtle pink shading on the tips of the fingers. The gestures that they've decided to give us do look quite natural. And lastly, two closed fists, already installed on him out of the box. What we are going to do now though is get Eric Draven himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. Wow. Sideshow truly have come a long way. When I was first thinking about getting this guy, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty hesitant. Sideshow usually do their best work when they don't have to capture a likeness. So when they're making like a clone or a comic book character or an alien or something. This figure shows that they can do realistic figures and they can do them well. Is this a sign that they will deliver going forward? Too early to tell in my opinion. Seriously though, I think Eric looks great. Proportions are solid even with the baggy jacket on, the material feels high quality, so I think it will last a while at least, and the head sculpt is sick. So far, I love this figure. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Eric's head sculpt. If this head sculpt existed in a vacuum and the Hot Toys one wasn't a thing, I think a lot more people would like this sculpt, because I can see the likeness from pretty much every angle. Dean Knight did recommend painting the lips and adding some more black around the eyes, which I do intend to do. Even right out of the box, I can see Brandon Lee. Yes, it's not potentially as good as the Hot Toys one. 
I do have that head sculpt on the way and I will modify it to fit on this body so stay tuned for a build a figure video on that. Out of the box, I'm not mad at this head sculpt at all. The expression works for me, he's got this somber, serious look about him. And the detail on the sculpt with the subtle skin texture and the blending between the black and white makeup, flawless. The eyes have this intensity to them and the high gloss does make them look very realistic. It's got these dangling rubbery pieces of hair and there's a lot of texture and flow to the rest of it. That is one of my complaints with the Hot Toy sculpt is that there's this massive seam across the top. And yes, there's a little one with the Sideshow sculpt. I think it just blends in with all of the rest of the texture for the hair, especially from a distance. Dude, even that side profile, I reckon looks great. This might just be one of Sideshow's best head sculpts ever. They are learning. They're getting better and better as they're releasing these more modern day 1-6 scale figures. Some of their old school ones weren't fantastic. The way they've sculpted the hair, how it flares out at the bottom, means that without the jacket on, we should get a little bit more range of motion as compared to normally when we have shoulder length sculpted hair like this. Articulation isn't amazing. It's also done that way so that the jacket can slot up underneath it. Speaking of the jacket, it is made of pleather. And that is immediately going to turn some people off. I totally understand. You don't want a figure to degrade in front of your eyes simply by having it standing in your display. Historically though, Sideshow figures have used sturdier pleather than Hot Toys ones. I tried to find a Hot Toys Eric without flaking or peeling. Every single one of them, even the really high priced ones, had some form of damage on the pleather. This guy, being a relatively new release, has a fresh outfit, so that is totally a non-issue, at least for now. So the jacket does have tears and gashes through it, and it's wired down below. Which is very important for a long jacket like this, because if it wasn't wired, it would be entirely unmanageable at the bottom. Because of the wires, now you can cinch it and have the front sit nice and straight along his legs. Or you can just remove the jacket entirely, which I do intend to do, because from everything that I've seen, this is a bespoke body by Sideshow specifically for Eric. And the proportions without the jacket on are bloody beautiful. Now the jacket is perhaps slightly baggy. And I think that was done by design, because don't forget, in the movie, this is Tintin's jacket. This was never Eric's, so maybe it isn't even his correct size. The sleeves are a bit long, it's baggy around the midsection, and the tie around the back is stitched in place. So it's not like you can undo this, then wring the pieces around the front and tie it up. They're locked in place because that's where they're supposed to be. Got more gashes on the sleeves, and there's even some detail poking through for the jacket lining. There is even more of that on the inside of the jacket. This is apparently something that wasn't there on the Hot Toys release, so it's an added little bit of accuracy for the Sideshow figure that people who have the Hot Toys one missed out on, if their jacket is still intact of course. The pockets are fake, same with the buttons, they're just stitched in, but they don't actually work. These little slits are non-functional. So uh, yeah. I think I've just found my permanent display option. This is how he's going to look forever in my collection. The jacket is dope. At the start of the movie, he looked like this. At the end of the movie, he looked like this. So for me, this is just the more iconic look for him. And now with the jacket off, the proportions are so much better. He looks very real and entirely seamless. Because the neck, yes, it's a separate piece, but from the front, because his jaw is so chiselled, you can't even see that seam. And the faux duct tape pieces on his forearms do disguise the wrist pegs and help it blend in with the duct tape on the hands. The shirt is stretchy spandex, so that's great for posing. And you can see the musculature poking through with the abs, the pecs and the biceps. Plus there are some holes with some skin texture underneath. The only complaint I have would be that this hole does expose the glossy, unpainted plastic for the shoulder. 
if only they'd added a little bit of skin texture there and some matte varnish, that would have solved it. From the front, it's not a deal breaker, at least not for me. This portion is also supposed to be duct tape, same thing with this bit that goes over the shoulder, and there's some string that straight up goes through his shirt. I have zoomed in for this because there's one little detail that we have to discuss for his upper torso before we move on. It's Shelley's ring. There is some sculpt work, as small as this is, on the front of it, and it's sitting on a brown piece of string. For the Hot Toys release, I think this was a wire, and while that's cool, that can be cumbersome to work with, because the wire doesn't drape naturally around his neck, it'll stick up and perhaps look goofy. This, undeniably, one of my favourite scenes in the movie. Fun boy shooting him through his hand, he plays along and then he shows the fact that, uh, yeah, he's not hurt at all and the hand promptly heals up. Got some blood trickling down, the grossness is present on both sides, and he does have Shelley's ring on his pinky. You do want to make sure to remove the ring around his neck, because this was before he actually turned it into a necklace, so it doesn't make sense for him to have two copies of Shelley's ring. I never noticed that on the front of the buttons, there are some sculpted in stars. That does suit the whole rock star vibe, I suppose. The pants are asymmetrical, we've got the duct tape on the right knee, but not on the left. And these pieces of string are real string, threaded through the outfit. The pleather feels sturdy enough for now, have to wait and see how it goes over time. The pants do tuck into the flared out boots, and the boots themselves are made of this sculpted rubbery plastic. They've even gone so far as to paint the eyelets and sculpt some laces underneath the rubbery plastic tongues. Unfortunately, there isn't any tread on the underside of the boots which is something that's present for the Hot Toys version. Before we move on, and I don't normally do this, I want to focus on the head sculpt one more time, because I am so taken aback by how good this sculpt is. Dean Knight was 100% right, this head sculpt gets a bad rap, and for no good reason, in person, it presents very, very well. Up close, you can see the scar on the nose, there's some subtle gradient to the face paint, and there's some skin tone poking through for his chin. I am tempted to do the Dean Knight repaint. If I do, then we'll take a look at like a before and after in the upcoming Crow Builder figure video. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, to tell you the truth, I had no idea who to go with. The most obvious comparison would have been the Hot Toys Eric Draven. I don't have him, at least not at the time of filming this video. I ended up going with 89 Batman, because one of the reviews from back in the day did say that Crow, and I quote, is better than Batman. As you can see, Eric Draven is taller than Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne. In real life, Michael Keaton is 5'9", whereas Brandon Lee was 5'11". To me, the scaling looks about right. What I said just before is accurate. I don't have the Hot Toys figure but I do have the Hot Toys head sculpt. So for a much closer up comparison, the Hot Toys sculpt on the left and the Sideshow one on the right. They're both good, but the Hot Toys one is so much better. It's more detailed, the makeup is more accurate, and I think the likeness is stronger. The only thing that I don't love with the Hot Toys sculpt is this seam line up top for the hair. That looks a little bit strange. Everything else I'm totally on board with. The individual dangling strands of hair and the multiple layers make it look so much more realistic. It's not to say that the Sideshow one is bad, I just think the Hot Toy sculpt is superior. Going over articulation with the long jacket on. If you were to remove it, you would get more range. So this is Eric at his most restricted. Starting off with his head sculpt, it's on a rubbery fixed neck with a double ball pig up underneath going forward to there, that's surprisingly further than expected, going up to there, swivel and pivot side to side. His arms will go up to there, almost completely unhindered, they will sit nice and flush down by his sides, going forward and back on soft ratchets, there's a butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down, swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow going past 90, and then for the wrist peg, it's a hinge and swivel. His upper body is on two separate joints, there's one at the mid torso and there's one at the waist. Crunching forward combined to there, going back to there, 
swivel and pivot side to side. His legs will go forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh. Double bend at the knee, going just past 90. I wouldn't push it too much further than that because you wouldn't want to stress out the pleather pants. And then for the ankles, because the boots are split as wide as they are up top, being unlaced and made of rubbery plastic, the double ball peg allows them to go forward and back, swivel, and you get some ankle tilt. Wrapping up on Sideshow's Eric Draven from The Crow. Being a 90s kid, I was far too young to have seen this movie when it first came out. I recently watched it, adored it, and had to get a figure, of course. Seeing as though the Hot Toys one has been out for ages and it's a known commodity at this point, I went straight for that one. Only to find pleather flaking, wonky proportions, and far less weapons than this one has. So, I decided to go with the Sideshow release. Do I regret that decision? Absolutely not. I am over the moon with this figure for multiple reasons. The coat is brand new, so that immediately means it's going to last longer because you don't have multiple years of wear and tear on it right out of the box. There's added detail inside the jacket that's just not there with the Hot Toys one. The proportions are so much better, and you get a ton of weapons. While the Hot Toys sculpt is the stronger of the two in terms of likeness, this is no slouch, so uh, yeah, I do not regret my decision one bit. Stay tuned for the upcoming Build-A-Figure episode, though. I am keen to mod the Hot Toys sculpt to try and get it to fit on this body. Now, I got mine direct from Sideshow themselves. I have popped an affiliate link to their site in the description below. As always, any commission earned will be reinvested back into the channel and put towards making new content. If you are heading down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.